example, I am going to be highlighting on one of the four pillars of good object-oriented design. This is going to be inheritance. What is inheritance and um, its relation with Ruby? Um, well, inheritance um, with Ruby specifically offers uh, what's called single inheritance. What is single inheritance? It's when one or more subclasses inherits the behaviors of one and only one superclass. An example of this would be, let's say, the class animal. And I have a class dog. I want dog to have the, all the behaviors that an animal would have, plus the behaviors that a dog would have. I do that through Ruby's inheritance operator, like animal. So now, animal is the parent class, or the base class, of dog. So one of the big purposes behind single inheritance is to specialize a base class. Because dog now takes everything from animal and then adds behaviors that some other subclass of animal would otherwise not have. So that's what's called the specialization of the base class. Um, everything of animal plus dog. So um, with that, Ruby only offers single inheritance, um, which can present issues. For example, when, um, say, going off of this example, I'm going to create a cat class. Cat is also an animal. Actually, I'm going to change this to pet. I'm also going to have a pet fish. Fish is a pet. Now I want the um, behaviors for um, the dog, the cat, and the fish uh, to be defined as such. I want the dog to be able to swim. I don't want the cat to swim. I also want the fish to be able to swim. So in this case, we have um, redundant code on 10 and 17. So I want to be able to generalize that into some other unit. Um, however, if I were to put this in the pet class, for example, which both the dog and the fish inherit from, um, the cat class is also going to inherit it, and I don't want that. So how do I prevent something like that? Well, I have to switch from single inheritance to multiple inheritance. Multiple inheritance is when one or more subclasses inherits the behavior of more than one base class. I'm going to call this um, a derived class instead. Um, so derived class, one or more derived classes inherits the behavior of more than one base class. So with that, um, how am I going to add another base class? Because Ruby is not going to allow me to create a second super class for the dog and um, the fish. Um, something that would be specific to a pet that can swim. This is when Ruby, um, their answer to this is what's called a module. What is a module? It's a collection of behaviors. Um, behaviors, uh, I'm going to do forward slash methods, because that's what the behavior is in this case. And then these modules are brought into the program through what's called a mix-in, meaning these modules are mixed into a class. And now I mix them in using what's called the include keyword. So example would be include and then module name. So I'm going to specify that module here. I'm going to say module uh, can swim. I'm going to go ahead and write that swim method right here. And I'm actually going to just say put us I can swim.
Now I don't need this. And the way that I include it is by doing this include keyword and then the can swim module. I'm gonna say okay. Include can swim. Great, so that's working smoothly. Um, I don't have any issues there. I'm going to go ahead and create an object of fish, dog, and cat. And I'm going to call that method. I'm actually going to make all pets are going to be able to, um, let's see, what well, it would be a behavior common to a dog, cat, and a fish. I'm going to say move. So they can move. What else I can move? Just for the purposes of instruction. Um, all right. So then I'm going to say dog is going to equal dog dot new. I'm going to say cat is going to equal cat dot new. So we're instantializing objects from the dog, cat, and fish. Now I'm going to call the swim method for both for all the dog, cat, and fish, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to run this code. All right, so then it first prints out I can swim for dog. Then it gives me a no method error for cat, so that means cat, we now know, there's no way for it to be able to um, call that swim method. It's, only, it's exclusively for the fish, and if I get rid for fish and dog, if I get rid of cat and I run this code, it's going to do, I can swim for both dog and fish. You can include, and this is the big benefit with modules as opposed to the inheritance that Ruby offers. You can do as many modules as you want. Um, so, for example, if I want the well, the dog and the cat can walk. Um, a fish can't walk. Um, so I'm gonna say module walkable. I'm gonna say walk. And I print I can walk. Once I've done that, I'm gonna include that down here. So now we have um, two methods that are uh, similar with dog and cat, and two methods similar with dog and fish, uh, but not with fish and cat. But they all inherit from pet, so they all have move. So this is an example of the inheritance um, happening between all of these different classes. We have um, three different super classes. Um, Two of them being modules that are mixed into the class. Um, so with that, I'm going to go into, and this is also called, um, with single inheritance, this less than sign, is considered the inheritance operator. So the class on the right is considered to be the parent class. The class on the left is going to be the um, child class, or the, the derived class of pet. Um, so going into now method lookup, um, this is another part of inheritance as well, um, or it goes along really with the modules. How does Ruby search for these methods? Um, because we are inheriting behavior. Behavior is methods. They are methods. Um, Ruby is a little um, interesting in the fact that um, it's going to look in, well, it's first going to look at, well, I'll go ahead and, and show you some code first. I'm going to say fish.swim and say I can swim. I'm going to put what's called the fish.ancestors and say fish can swim. Okay. So Ruby is going to first look for methods within whatever class that the object was instantiated from. So for fish, it's going to be the fish class. Um, and then it goes into whatever classes that this fish is inheriting from, and it starts with the module. So in this case, it's going to look first in can swim. Um, so it looks in that module first, and as we can see here, this is what's called the ancestors chain. 
it first looks in fish for the method, for the me this method, swim, or really any method because we call this so fish.ancestors. If any method first starts with fish, so it looks in fish. If it can't find fish or if it can't find the method within fish, it's going to go into that next module so with this can swim. And then it goes into the um, parent class from the single inheritance or the, the inheritance operator. Um, and when, in this case, it's going to be the pet. And then a pet uh, class and any class is going to automatically be inheriting from that object class. And then the modules within the object class, which is the JSON and the PP. After that, it goes into the class that object inherits from, which is kernel. And then um, another class or the class that kernel inherits from basic object. Uh, so that's how Ruby looks for methods. Um, it's going to look in the first original class that it was instantiated from. Then it looks in the modules. And then it looks into the parent class from the inheritance operator or from the, uh, the single inheritance, um, this base class. Um, and then it goes into all the other classes that are going to default for any class. Um, but it's an interesting behavior that's worth pointing out is um, how it looks up modules. Um, so I'm going to call a, the ancestors method and look at the, ans or the ancestors chain for dog. Okay. So same thing, it's going to look in the first class, that it, the class that it was instantiated from, dog. Then it's going to start on the bottom most module, and then it's going to work up. So it's going to start with walkable, and then if it doesn't find the method in walkable, it's going to move into can swim. So it doesn't go from the top down as if you were executing code. And that's something that's definitely worth pointing out and can trip someone up for sure, especially if there's a... Um, method of the same name within can swim and walkable you're going to be calling the method that's within walkable first uh, and that's going to be the one that gets executed it would override this whatever method might be in can swim it would override any method that might be in pet if it finds it in the walkable first so that's worth pointing out um, with modules it's not going to start from the top and work down it's going to work from the bottom and work up and then um, once you go from walkable, you go up to can swim. Once you go from can swim, it goes to pet, so on and so forth. Um, and this is default for any, any class. So this sums up my um, summary of inheritance, one of the pillars of object-oriented programming. If you enjoyed this course, please like and subscribe. I will be continuing to post videos on just software engineering topics in general. Um, I'll be progressively going into more advanced topics if you would like to follow. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Y'all have a good one.